This chapter 4 examines a number of typical structured notes that embed views on commodity prices, including instruments with bullish and bearish views, ones based on views that the underlying will trade within a certain range, ones that involve a single commodity or basket of commodities, and ones that provide a payoff to the investor in a currency different from the currency, usually US dollars, in which the commodity ordinarily trades, known as quantoed instruments. We outline the basic pricing aspects and trade-offs of these instruments without attempting an exact deconstruction of every feature. We saw one example of a structured note already in the preceding chapter, namely the Exxon crude linked five-year note. Our focus there was on the borrower and his use of a short call option position to reduce his funding cost when crude prices are low in exchange for higher payments when revenues from sales of crude are rising. You will recall that we used European calls to generate the additional payments of coupon when crude prices rose above 100 on any coupon payment date. This has two drawbacks. First, it exposes the investor to the risk that crude prices, although high generally, may dip on the coupon payment date and deprive the investor of all or some of the additional coupon payments. And second, it makes the options quite expensive given the typically high volatility of commodity prices. A common approach to managing these two problems is to use average rate options, also known as Asian options, instead of European ones. The reference to average rate in the name of these options specifically calls in our case, stems from the fact that their payoff at maturity equals max zero S star minus 100, where S star is the average price of crude over some defined period of time rather than the price on only the coupon payment date. In the simplest version, we would define the period for the averaging process to be the entire six months between coupon payments. If, for example, this average turns out to be 120, the payoff becomes $20 at the expiration of the option, even if the spot price on that day is well below 120, and even if it is below the $100 strike. Not only does this eliminate the risk to the investor of foregoing coupon due to a last minute collapse in the price of crude, it also makes the option cheaper, so permits the investor to achieve increased exposure to rising crude prices than under our earlier alternative. The lower price of average rate options stems from the mathematical reality that the average of a time series over some defined period is less volatile than any one observation in the future. This reduces the hedging cost for the dealer selling this option and thus also the price of the option. The amount of the premium reduction depends on the exact price behavior of the underlying, but often can reach 30% or 40% of the premium for a regular option. In turn, 
This allows the investor to purchase a larger quantity of these options and therefore to increase his exposure to rising prices. If we assume the price reduction, for example, is exactly 33.33%, one-third, the investor is able to purchase an additional 50% of calls. Note carefully, 50% and not just 33%, which increases his upside per dollar above 100 from 20 basis points to 30 basis points. Our previous term sheet would now be rewritten as follows with this as the coupon formula. The increased exposure is reflected in the denominator of 333 turning red now in the payoff formula which replaces the previous denominator of 500. The principal drawback of this version of the instrument is this. Just as a last minute drop in price has limited effect on the payoff to the investor, since it barely affects the average in and of itself, a last minute gain has the reverse effect, since the payoff under this version would be smaller than under the first version. This is even true in a scenario of steady and gradual price increases up to the coupon payment date. Assume, for example, that the initial spot price of 100 rises exactly 25 cents daily, including on weekend days. At the end of the first interest period, the price would reach somewhere around $145, depending on the exact number of days in that period. Under our original term sheet, the investor would receive additional interest equal to 9% annualized, since every $5 above 100 translates into an additional 1%. Here, the investor achieves additional interest equal to 22.5 divided by 333 which comes to 6.75%. The 22.5 being the amount by which the average price, visibly around 122.5, exceeds the strike of 100. Averaging has reduced S star to 122.5 versus an S final SF of 145 under the preceding version. This is partly but not entirely offset by the lower denominator in the payoff formula. Need the averaging take place over the entire interest period between coupons and involve daily observations necessarily? No. It can be anything the two parties find acceptable, consistent with their preferences. We could average, for example, over the last month in the interest period only, and or we could look at the spot price only at the end of each week versus looking at it on a daily basis. But each of these would alter the pricing of the option generally making it more expensive the fewer observations we include in the averaging calculation. If, for example, we define S star as simply the arithmetical average of the spot price at the end of each week in the final three months of the semi-annual interest period, we would be replacing 90 or so observations with a mere 12 or 13. This still reduces the volatility of the amount we are calculating versus that for a single observation on the last day of the interest period, 
but to a lesser extent than under daily observations over the entire period. The premium for this option would lie somewhere between the premium under the original structure and that for daily observations throughout the entire period. We turn next to basket structures which define the underlying as a basket of commodities rather than just one. The investor is bullish on commodities generally, but is reluctant to express this view exclusively via crude oil. A basket is therefore designed for her, consisting in equal parts of crude oil, gold, copper and grain, essentially one item in each principal category of commodities discussed in Chapter 1, namely energy, precious metals, other metals, and soft or agricultural commodities. The result is a lower premium. Assuming the vols for each of the three new items is the same or lower than that of crude oil. Even if these vols are the same as for crude or slightly higher even, their price movements are likely to offset to some degree over time bringing the overall volatility of the entire basket below that for crude in isolation. You will have recognized that this assumes a less than perfect correlation among the items in the basket. The higher this correlation, the smaller the benefits of combining them together. In essence, the less the basket is truly a basket and the more it comes to behave like crude oil in isolation. The future correlations of the items in the basket must be estimated by the dealer structuring the instrument and will be reflected in the pricing with higher correlations cheapening the option less than low correlations and low correlations cheapening it less than negative correlations. An error in estimating these correlations results potentially in losses for the dealer, although the error may be to her advantage and increase her profit just as well. Indeed, the fair value of this instrument after it is issued will reflect changes in expected correlations among the dealer community. If correlations rise or, to be more precise, if the market's expectation of future correlations rises. The option becomes more valuable, all other things being the same, and the structured note rises in value. And vice versa, if correlation declines after the issue date. Some traders and hedge funds even use basket instruments to take views on future correlation going long an instrument like the one in our discussion if they expect correlations to rise and going short if they expect them to fall. We have described so far instruments that express bullish views on commodities but bearish views can be expressed just as easily. This involves quite simply replacing the call options embedded in the structures with put options. And these puts, as before, can be European or Asian and can involve single commodities or baskets. Keeping it simple and assuming European puts and calls on crude struck at 100 cost the same an investor who believes crude prices are still too high at 100 would find interesting the following term sheet with the following coupon formula. Note the inversion of the strike of 100 and the final spot price.
we can also of course replicate the average rate feature by writing our previous term sheet as follows with the coupon formula this time looking like this and once again note the inversion of the strike of 100 and the average value of S can we offer something for investors that believe commodities will trade within a range certainly but the construction of such an instrument is more complex and cannot be described in detail in this chapter an investor who feels oil is likely to remain between 80 and 120 for the foreseeable future would be attracted by the following term sheet here's the coupon formula 10 percent on each coupon payment date on which the price of oil in the spot market is between 80 and 120 otherwise zero constructing this instrument requires the dealer first to create digital options on the underlying commodity something we do not examine here but which we have done in our module interest rate options to which you can refer to learn more Suffice it to describe the digital call on crude oil that is needed here, properly structured, as one that pays a fixed amount if the spot price at expiration exceeds the strike, otherwise nothing. Assume we structure a digital call of this kind, struck at 80, that pays the equivalent of 10% annualized when it is in the money, otherwise zero and another digital call struck at 120 that pays the same amount at expiration if it is in the money and again zero otherwise the payoff described in the term sheet can be generated by embedding into the instrument a long digital call at 80 and a short digital call at 120 within the range the investor receives the payoff from the first call only and outside the range he receives nothing these instruments are more typically structured so that the price on each day affects the payoff and not just the price on the coupon payment date in the more conservative version the investor accrues coupon at an annualized 10 percent on each day that the price of crude falls within the range and accrues nothing on each day on which crude falls outside the range if crude has remained within the range during the entire period the full 10 percent annualized is paid to the investor but if it has remained in the range for only a fraction of the total days in aggregate the annualized coupon he receives becomes 10 percent times f where f is that fraction the more aggressive version of this type of instrument eliminates the investors coupon entirely if crude falls outside the range on any single day during the interest period this version of the instrument is even more difficult to construct and exposes the investor to far greater risk than the preceding alternatives since coupon is foregone entirely if oil falls outside the range on one single day within a six month period Offsetting this is the far higher coupon it would offer the investor in those cases when the price remains entirely within the range throughout the period. We conclude this overview of commodity linked structured notes by discussing quantoed alternatives. 
These are identical to the ones we described previously, except for being denominated in currencies other than the US dollar, despite the fact that commodity prices, in the great majority of cases, are quoted exclusively in US dollars. A term sheet for the bullish crude oil instrument might look as follows. Here's the coupon formula. Note carefully that while the coupons are paid in euros, they are calculated by reference to a formula that has the US dollar price of crude as an input. We have kept the remaining parts of the term sheet identical to those before, but cannot be certain this will be the case in practice. The denominator may need to increase or decrease, depending on how much it costs, to structure the unusual feature in the call option, the one that hedges out the currency risk and converts the payoff from dollars into euros at a predetermined exchange rate. An option of this kind is referred to as a quanto option and its pricing reflects not only the volatility of the underlying crude oil in this case but also the volatility of the relevant currency pair, Euro-Dollar here, and very importantly the correlation between the underlying and the currency pair, i.e. the correlation between crude prices quoted in US dollars and the spot rate for US, Euro-US dollar. As we stated, the extent of this correlation may increase or reduce the denominator in the formula. Chapter 4 ends right here.